J. Cole responded to Kendrick. I gotta take my jacket off for this one. J. Cole dropped a surprise album, Might Delete Later, before he releases his next project to fall off. J. Cole dedicates song number 12 titled Seven Minute Drill to respond to Kendrick Lamar's verse on the song Like That on Future and Metro Boomin's album that dropped on March 22nd. What do you guys think of this response? J. Cole rapped rap. This wasn't just rap. This is the off-season Cole. He finally dove into that bag that we know that he has because Cole does pop out and do these things occasionally, but the off-season was his most consistent, aggressive flow to show everybody that he is the most talented artist possibly ever. Who agrees or disagrees with that? I might be on the fence, but we know that this man could deliver, and now we're seeing it. Here are the J. Cole bars that stood out to me on this album, Might Delete Later. How I look having henchmen. If shots get to popping, I'm the one doing the clinching. So he's saying that if anything were to pop off rap wise, he's not sending anybody else to do his beef. So I'm assuming that he's talking about his Dreamville team because a lot of people were saying that Jid, Boz, you know, uh, different artists that are on his label possibly might jump into the mix. But he's saying that he'll be the first one to shoot if he needs to do the rap bars, which he's showing now doing this response to Kendrick's verse and letting him know that he's prepared to go toe to toe with him on the bars. He's still doing shows but fell off like The Simpsons. That one's kind of a stretch there because Kendrick just had the highest grossing headlining tour by a rap artist ever. His shows brought in $110,886,000. Yes, $110,886,000. And that's for 73 shows. So, we can't really say that Kendrick fell off because highest grossing rap artist ever, that doesn't really add up to him falling off. But okay, the bar was pretty dope because you know he references to Simpsons and how long that show has been running. And of course, having a show that's been running for that long of time, you're gonna have some shows that aren't the best, but overall, the body of work is gonna be crazy because The Simpsons is still one of the longest standing shows ever. Then J. Cole goes on to say that your first ish was classic, your last ish was tragic, your second ish put to sleep, but they gassed it. Your third ish was massive and that was your prime. I was trailing right behind and I just now hit mine. Now in front of the line with the comfortable lead, how ironic soon as I get to the top, he wants something with me. That right there was probably the biggest direct hit that he could have delivered to Kendrick because he referenced his whole body of work. This by far was the hardest hitting lines of this song. He addresses all of Kendrick's body of work and calls out which ones that he feels were good and the others that were not up to par. The two albums in question that he calls not that great of albums was To Pimp a Butterfly, which is the second album released by Kendrick, and the latest project is Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Do you feel that these albums missed the mark? I don't. I loved both of those albums and J. Cole, you know, he's right for getting at him in different aspects and trying to come at him for his music, doing what he does, but To Pimp a Butterfly is absolutely a classic. There's no way you can look at that record and say, oh, this is not a classic album from Kendrick. People are going to sleep on this album. That's just not true. Do you feel these albums missed the mark or is J. Cole just hating? He averaged in one hard verse every 30 months or something. So here, he's talking about how long it takes Kendrick to release albums, singles, different things like that, taking a hiatus. He did have a five year gap from 2017 to 2022, but to be fair, Kendrick and J. Cole both have the same amount of studio albums that have released, six albums total in the last 13 years. They both dropped in 2011, all the way up until now, they have the same amount of catalog. So. It makes sense based on the time, but he's kind of being a little bit hypercritical in this situation because they both like to do that hiatus type thing and take their time with their music. Which, you know, as fans, we want more from these guys because we love rap, we love how they're both great artists, but at the same time, you know, they leave more for the, the palette, which I think is part of their, their way that they keep this aura around them as great artists. If he wasn't dissing, then we wouldn't be discussing him. This bar is hard because J. Cole feels that Kendrick would be irrelevant if he wasn't dissing him and Drake. Do you agree with this statement? My thoughts on this is, Kendrick is relevant anytime he jumps on a verse. 
doesn't matter what year, doesn't matter what time, date, any of those types of things. Same thing with J. Cole, he could jump on the verse out the blue and it's gonna be relevant to us because we're seeing something different from these artists that we don't always get. Consistency with their music. Andre 3000 was notorious for this. He'll disappear for a while, but then he comes back, he delivers a hard song. He delivers a verse that's beautiful. Things like that. So the artistry is always gonna hit harder if the artist stays relevant, but also is able to take time off. If the artist doesn't take the time off, sometimes you get oversaturated. Like, how do we feel about Drake? Do we feel like he's been giving us too much music? Do we feel like he needs time off? Or do you like the amount of music that he delivers on a regular basis and his consistency is what you enjoy the most? Let me know in the comments if you feel like that's the route to go for an artist or do you like an artist that takes their time, delivers classic projects, and sits back and thinks about it for a while. I'm Nino with this thing. This that New Jack City meme. Yeah, I'm aiming at G Money crying tears before I bust at him. This reference has a lot of ways that it ties together with Kendrick and J. Cole. Because in the movie New Jack City, you could see that G Money was Nino's right hand man for a while until he cut a side deal and Nino ends up killing him. J. Cole is saying that he is killing K Dot in rap and he was kind of like his right hand man when he was coming up. Because when K Dot first got started, on Section 80, J. Cole actually produced a few records for him. So they were working together pretty closely and they almost dropped a project together. They have the songs recorded and ready to go, but for whatever reason, they never ended up dropping that project. This, you know, makes sense how J. Cole could take this as Kendrick coming at him in a different way and him feeling like he's the bigger artist being the Nino Brown in the situation and Cole being the G Money. Four albums in 12 years, I can divide. So he's telling them that his pattern of releasing music is very sporadic. He doesn't deliver albums that often, which like I said earlier, J. Cole also has that same inconsistency with his music. I'll give him credit. He's been starting to show up a lot more in the past few years. And now Kendrick seems like he's ready to get in his bag as well. But they both have six albums total since 2011. So the amount of activity that the artists put into the music that they're doing they're right on par with each other. He has been releasing music at a slightly faster pace than Kendrick in recent years, but it's not that much of a difference to notice. I'm excited seeing the direction hip hop and rap is heading towards. We haven't seen a beef this good since Nas and Jay-Z. Real rap is back and 2024 is looking like a great year for music. Like, share, and leave your feedback on the best rapper debate. Thanks Splashers for watching and catch you on the next one.